city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. saying goodbye to my informant, the stage driver. The information wasn't worth it. Here, here's your hat. Uh, thank you. You just get off the stage? Yeah, I came all the way from St. Louis. I must say, St. Louis is looking better to me all the time. My name's Norton, uh, Reed Norton. My name is Adams, Dr. Adams. Anybody forcing you to come here, Norton? I'm a correspondent. I'm uh, after a story on the stage holdup that happened near here several days ago. Oh, heard about that all the way to St. Louis, did you? Oh, your western shooting matches get a lot of publicity. Yeah, well, if you know all about it, why did you have to come to Dodge? Well, I, wa- I want the real story. Not some romanticized account. Oh, I see. Hey, maybe you can tell me what you know about it. Eh? Mr. Norton, since you're so interested in the real thing and all... I suggest you get your story from Marshal Dillon. Huh? Now, he'd be the man with the facts. Oh, and a swagger to go with him, I suppose. Yes, swagger. Why don't you find out for yourself? I'll do that, Doc. I'll just do that. Marshal Dillon? Yeah, I'm Marshal Dillon. Come on in. You want to see me? You or somebody who can tell a straight story? No. Well, who are you? Norton. Reed Norton. I'm a correspondent out of St. Louis. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Norton. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Your uh, paper sent you here? No, it's my own idea. It's about time somebody wrote a story on the frontier the, the way it really is and, and not the way it's pictured in exaggerated accounts as in Harper's Weekly. Now, ah. and uh, you figure that you're the man to write that story, huh? I'm a hard man to fool, Dylan. I've been worked on by experts. I was a general crook at the Rosebud. Those cavalrymen are pretty good at telling tall tales to correspondents. I see. You think you're going to get a tall tale from me, is that it? Seems to be a habit here in the West. A story isn't a story if it isn't three times life size. I'll tell you something, Mr. Norton. You're not going to get a tall tale from me. In fact, you're not going to get any story at all. Now, Marshal, you must have some explanation of how you let the men who held up... The... You figure that's the way it was, huh? I can see you're not chasing me, even though it's known one of them was badly wounded and couldn't travel far. Mm. You got some suggestions about that? I marshal the way the West is advertised. Well, I know about the scouts, the cavalry. Well, you're welcome to bring him down here. That trail, Mr. Norton, was a day old before I even got word of the holdup. It could bear off on a hundred miles in any direction. A day old and swept clean by a wind coming all the way from Canada with nothing to stop it. I see. So you've given it up. You're letting them get away. They won't get away. You going to catch them sitting in your office, Marshal Dillon? 
You're going to write your story before it's finished, Mr. Norton? Appointment as a marshal. Oh. Norton's been in here, huh? All afternoon. He sure has a chip on his shoulder about the way we live out here. Yeah, well, I think some of the cavalry boys gave him a pretty good hazing. Oh? He's not the kind to forget. Maybe not, but he isn't doing you any good. Ah, don't pay him any attention, Kitty. He doesn't bother me, Matt. But he's doing a lot of talking to anybody else who'll listen. Here's beer, Mark. Oh, thanks, Sam. Sure thing. Uh, kidding. Yeah. What's Norton been saying? That you're sitting there in an office full of guns, not doing anything to bring the hold-up men in. <sighs> he talks pretty good story, doesn't he? Yeah, but, Matt, I... Hey, yeah, yeah, over here, Chester. What is it? <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Kitty. Oh, sure, Chester. Uh, Mr. Dillon, Joe Porter just got in from a trip down Meadway, and he is pretty upset. Oh, why? Well, because along about night, Paul, last night he was going by that old deserted Hutchinson cabin out there. He, he figured he'd bed down for the night. Oh, and he got and scared he... off by the old man's ghost, huh? If they was ghosts, Miss Kitty, they was two of them. Well, all right, Chester. What happened? Well, two people was firing at Joe with rifles. He took off and never stopped for breath till he got here to Dodge. The old Hutchinson place, huh? Yes, sir. Now, why would anybody be out there? I don't know, Chester. Yet. They get the horses. We'll ride out and take a look at that cabin ourselves. much, Chester. How's that? If a rifle's aimed at me, I'm not particular about who's aiming it. Uh, I suppose not. I... Mr. Dillon, I believe there's somebody following after us. Yeah, you're right. Hold up a minute. Can't rightly see too good in this light. Just keep your rifle handy. Mm. I declare, Mr. Dillon, it's that newspaper fellow. Yeah. What are you doing here, Norton? I've been tracking you, Marshal Dillon. The best tradition of the West. Tracking. Ain't no cracking about it. All he's doing is riding right behind it. Ain't nothing to that. What do you want, Norton? Why, I, I want to be in on the kill, Marshal. I want to watch you single-handedly bring in the desperados. What makes you think we're after anybody? Oh, Marshal, you're not riding out here just to exercise your horses. Now to send you straight back to Dodge. Yeah, but the night's coming on, Marshal Dillon, and you told me yourself how hard it is to follow a trail on the prairie. And I got half a mind to let you find out for yourself just how true it is. But you'd get lost, and I'd have to waste my time looking for you. Then I, I can join the expedition. Uh, after all, you... Don't have much choice. All right. Well, just stay out of the way and mind your own business. You should know, Marshal. I I wouldn't interfere with the carrying out of frontier justice. And keep your mouth shut. And that's the best idea of all. Uh, Marshal. Starting right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Be just over that next little rise, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Chester, we'll leave the horses in those trees over there and go the rest of the way on foot. The way Ned Buntline tells it, Western peace officers never go on foot. Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dillon, couldn't we just tie up this smart aleck and leave him with the horses? Take it easy, both of you. It's just that I want to get things right, Dillon. I, I want to do you justice in my story. If you don't start being a little quieter, you may not be around to write a story. We're close to earshot now. Yeah, this is as good a spot as any. Chaucer. Yes, sir. Hobble the horses, will you? I'm going to move up ahead a little. Okay. You come with me, Norton. I want you where I can keep an eye on you. All right. We'll see the shack from up here? Yeah. Won't they be able to see us? If they're looking, they will. Kind of, kind of dangerous, isn't it? You wanted to see how it was done, Mr. Norton. All right, you better get out. Now what? As soon as Chester comes up, we'll move in closer. All right, Chester. Let's go have a look. All right. We're right on top of me, we. Yeah. I'm going to try to. Get on. We sure ain't surprising them, man. You stay down, Chester. I'm going to try and talk to him. Two men in there. And the marshal out of Dodge City. Now we're looking right down your throat. You'll never make it shooting it out with us. Now you throw your guns out and come on out and you won't get hurt. You can't get us. Well, that's up to you. What will you do, Mr. Dillon? We're going to have to make it from the front, Chester. There's no way for one of us to get around back. What about me? You'd be smart to go back where you were. We're not writing the story. I don't feel much like writing one either. Mr. Dillon, look. Shaq, somebody's coming out. Yeah, I see him. Come back here, you... No, you don't shoot! Got him, Mr. Dillon. Help me! Please! Help me! Don't shoot, Chester. Uh, I ain't with them. I ain't with them. Here, let's get him down behind his rise. Uh, yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't shoot me again, Marshal. I ain't with them. They made me stay with them. It's all right, son. Yeah, let's have a look at that arm. Uh, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Bind it up, will you, Chester? I'll try, but it needs something real tight. I'll do what you can. Can I help? I don't know, Mr. Norton. Seems to me you got your story. Well, that, that can wait. Ought to be a real good one, too. Yes, but, but I... a headline that reads, Marshal shoots unarmed boy instead of bandit. That ought to give your readers a real good idea of what the West is like. Well, Marshal, it's a Go on, like... write it. Uh, Mr. Dillon, I'll, I'll come with you. You stay with the boy, Chester. But, Mr. Dillon... I said stay with the boy. I'll handle this. Crazy. He'll be killed. I guess I was wrong. You took his book. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, you all right? It's all over, Chuck. Yeah, but are you all right? Yeah. I got on back up there and watch that boy like I told you to. Yeah, but Mr. Dillon... Nobody needs any help down here. Now, go on. I'll be up there in a minute. Well, 
Mr. Dillon. I'll tell you one thing this newspaper fellow is good for. He sure can handle a shovel. I guess it's good for us to have to dig at least one grave in our lifetime. Keeps us from taking anything for granted. But digging two seems to be overdoing it a bit. Yeah. You riding easy enough back there, son? Oh, sure, Marshal. Ain't nothing the matter with me. You just ticked me. And like they say, that bullet's a long way from my heart. Well, don't get too gay with it and start it bleeding again. Doc will probably want to stitch you up a little bit when we get back to town. Oh, I don't think he'll have to do anything like that. No, Doc will do you a real nice job. I got some of his sewing in my shoulder, and it's every bit as pretty as hem stitching. Uh, Marshal Dillon. Yeah. Would you be interested in hearing some of my ideas about the West? Why don't you just write them down for your newspaper, Mr. Norton? These are revised ideas, Marshal. I thought that you ought to be the first to know. I don't care what you print in your newspaper. I answer for my own mistakes. What I was going to say was... I've come to see the West as a place to live, just like any other place. Yeah. Man has a job there, just like any other man. It's no different because he wears a gun. A little noisier sometimes. Man makes mistakes in the West... Like he makes mistakes in St. Louis. And he goes ahead trying to do his job just like they do everywhere else. Well, maybe you've learned something after all. I think I have. Marshal? Yeah? I was just wondering if you'd let me buy you a drink when we get back to town. Sure, Norton, I'll have a drink with you. You may still have something to learn about Western whiskey, though. and directed by Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.